Hello, my name is Elektra Wagenrad and I have been designing this device. This is the Freifunk Open MPPT PowerPoint Tracker with an ESP32 microcontroller inside. I'm going to explain to you now why you would want a maximum PowerPoint Tracker in your solar system. This diagram shows you the relationship between voltage and current of a silicon-based solar cell under varying levels of solar irradiation. The orange line is drawn at 1000 watts per square meter. Under this condition, the solar cell reaches its peak output power at 0.45 volt. At the opposite end of the maximum power point are two extremes. On the right side, we can see what happens if the cell is idle. Then it produces maximum voltage but zero current, which makes zero watts, so the output is zero. And on the left hand side, if we short the terminals of the solar panel, then we get maximum current but zero voltage and therefore the power again is zero. If we connect the battery straight to the solar panel or even if you put a very simple solar charge controller in between that doesn't have maximum power point tracking, we are losing power because the behavior of the solar generator is not adapted to the behavior of the battery. A solar generator has a relatively high internal resistance and the battery has a very low internal resistance. So if we connect them together, the battery will ask more currents than the generator can produce and therefore the voltage in the solar generator will drop down. On the other hand, if we put the maximum power point tracker in between, it can calculate at which point of voltage it gets the peak power. It takes just the, that amount of current so that the solar panel stays at that voltage, transforms it down to the battery and the result is an increase in charge current. This is a small solar panel for 12 volt systems. It's rated at 30 watts which is typically not exactly what you get from the solar module because solar panels when they get tested they're tested at a cell temperature of about 25 degrees and if you have strong sun irradiation shining on the solar panel then they get considerably hot and therefore they lose a, a little bit of the voltage that they produce now let's take a look on the back side of the panel to check the specs, which are printed on a little label. It, the peak power is rated at 30 watts, therefore what WP, watts peak. There's a, they give a tolerance, so if you're lucky you get up to 3% more than the rate. The module is defined by the open circuit voltage. This is the voltage that you can see if the voltage is idle, so if it doesn't have to produce any current. So when you put it into the sun and there is no load, this is the amount of voltage that you expect at 1000 watts of solar energy per square meter. Then we have maximum power voltage, VMP. This is the voltage where the, pro where the product of voltage multipl multiplied with current produces 30 watts. So this is the maximum power point with, as you guess it, maximum power. Then we can see short circuit current. This is when we short the positive and negative terminal of the module, it will produce yeah, zero voltage, but maximum current, which is 1.65 in, in this panel. And then the next item is max power current. That means at max power voltage in 1000 watts of irradiation it can produce up to 1.53 amperes. And if we multiply 1.53 amperes with 19.7 volts we get 30 watts. Now I'm going to measure 
the idle voltage. We're not going to get the absolute maximum that you get from the spec sheet because we don't have 1000 watts of irradiation and also the module is lying flat on this table. The digital multimeter is set to measure voltage, 200 volts DC. And now I can touch with the negative terminal, which is black, the black cable, which comes from the solar module, and the red tip, which is positive, touches the positive terminal of the solar panel. So we get 21.1 volts. If I would lift it, because at the moment it's lying flat and the sun, sun is not at the highest uh, point, we'll, we will see a little bit more voltage. I have now provisionally uh, elevated the solar module, so it has a steeper angle. It's not the absolute optimum angle, but you'll see the effect that already lifting the, the panel to a better position will increase the voltage and also, therefore, the amount of energy that we can harvest. So, I'm measuring again, and instead of 21.1, we see like 21.55, so the multimeter cannot decide between 0.5 and 0.6. Now I'm going to measure the short current. This is the current that occurs when I just directly connect positive and negative terminal of the solar panel. I can do this. I'm not doing any harm because the amount of current is limited by the amount of current that the solar panel can produce. Now let's measure this value. I have now set the digital multimeter to measure amperes. Here you can see the ampere sign. And the dash and the dots show that it's measuring DC. I've put it to 5 amperes, the largest value that I can set the device to. And I have uh, moved this uh, cable connector to the position for measuring amperes. This is typical for uh, digital multimeters. Don't forget uh, to remove it from this place if you try to measure the, the voltage of a battery because it would just blow the internal connection inside the digital multimeter if it's not fused or a fuse if there is one inside. One point four seven. This is the current. The, the specs of that panel say it's a one point six one or six seven amperes. So one point four seven is pretty decent for the short circuit current. This is a battery which is suitable to operate the Freifunk ESP thirty two maximum power point tracker in an environment like uh, Central Europe or even Northern Europe if you only use the internal Wi-Fi if you connect some sensors this would be enough to power it all year together with the solar panel it will produce plenty of power so it can run even under the conditions of winter time when the sun irradiation is at its, at, it, at its lowest point. It says 12 volt, 7.2 ampere hours. 7.2 ampere hours is the amount of current stored in the battery when it's charged 100% and when it's new. So if there's no aging or wear so far. I've put this, uh, this tape on top of the battery because once the positive and negative terminals are exposed there is an imminent danger. If you have a tool that, that makes a contact between these two terminals then you will produce a massive short. And uh, this short can be dangerous. The, the stuff that you put in between can get very hot, glow and melt and even burn. 
and if it's a if it's a stable tool like a spanner made out of steel which is conductive and you touch the terminals then the spanner would start to glow and then the battery is also in danger of exploding or catching fire so we have to be careful when handling the batteries the color coding is of course the same the positive terminal is red the negative terminal is black DC voltage has a polarity if we reverse polarity we will destroy electronic devices because they also have a polarity and if we reverse that so if we confuse positive and negative we can destroy them if they are not fused and not protected against reverse polarity current okay we're going to do a little experiment I'm going to show you how much current the module charges into the battery if we just connect the battery straight to the solar panel I'll just use this crocodile clamp and uh, put the ampere meter the multimeter switch to ampere measurement in between so now we see the current the direct current from the solar panel floating into the battery this is only an experiment it's a dangerous experiment because if we reverse the positive and negative cable we will burn the bypass di diodes in the panel so we can damage the panel so be careful if you do something like this to not reverse polarity now I'm going to show you how to connect the device to the battery I have some uh, laboratory cable I'm using uh, usually you would use something like, uh, in German we call it a carbon shoe, cable shoe, but I guess there is uh, some other word in the English language, but you get the idea. Uh, those those uh, connectors that you plug into the Fasten AMP, this is like a 4.8 or 6.3 millimeter Fasten connector, so a Fasten connector. But here for the sake of our uh, field experiment, I'll just use this cable. This cable is going to make the connection from the positive terminal of the battery to the battery plus terminal of the solar charge controller which is like is this one here on the on the PCB is printed battery plus battery minus next to it and here in front solar plus solar minus so accordingly I'm going to connect these cables Make sure that the internal wires from the cable don't make a short to the clamp next to it. Black for the negative terminal. Before I connect it to the battery, solar, that's the connector here, number two, from the left side, I have to open the terminal a bit, the cables are I'm using now are 1.5 square millimeter inductor cross section. Now, before I'm going to connect it to the battery, I also attach the temperature sensor. 
the temperature sensor is, is connected here. It doesn't have a polarity, so it doesn't matter if you plug it in this or that way. This is actually a resistor that is temperature dependent and usually you would just attach it to the battery with some gaffer tape or just yeah, some adhesive tape. What it does, it measures the temperature of the battery and corrects the charging voltage. If the battery is hot, the charging voltage has to be reduced. If the battery gets even hotter, above 40 degrees, the device will stop charging. So make sure you don't operate the battery for extended amounts of time in direct sunlight because it will overheat and then the device will stop charging. So you will wonder why the battery is not full. Well, then it's because the battery got too hot. I don't have any duct tape here, but I guess you see my point. So before I connect the solar panel, I connect the battery and the last thing I'm doing is I connect the positive terminal, terminal of the solar panel. Yeah, uh, I didn't connect the Wi-Fi pigtail here on the board. This is the ESP32 module and this is the antenna connector. I'm using it now without the antenna. But of course, if you're going to install it in the field and you want to use Wi-Fi, then you will, of course, install an antenna. It's kind of not recommended to operate the microcontroller without an antenna, but I know that they, are, they will survive even <laughs> running Wi-Fi without an antenna connected. So this is the current coming in from the solar panel. And this is the current floating into the battery. As you note, there is more current floating into the battery than it's coming from the solar panel. And that is because the maximum power point tracker is doing its job. This is the terminal of the battery. It's 14.32 volt. So that's going to the battery. It's already full. The charge current is already reducing. And this is the voltage coming from the solar panel. So now the solar panel operates at 20.7 volt and the output is 14.3 volt, which is the charge end voltage of the battery. The battery is already pretty much full and the solar tr the tracker, the solar charge controller is reducing the current floating into the battery so it slowly gets full without overcharging it. Because if we would not regulate the voltage and the current from the solar panel, the battery would be overcharged, get hot, the water component inside the electrolyte of the battery would get cracked into hydrogen and oxygen, the battery would lose electrolyte, dry out, and be damaged. So the charge controller is always necessary to prevent damaging the battery from overcharging and it also the charge controller also protects against deep discharge which is another way to kill the battery to discharge it beyond or below a certain level of charge. I have to mention that in this experiment the maximum power point tracker was not operating at the maximum power point. It was deliberately increasing the tracking point above the maximum power point in order to reduce the amount of current that floats into the battery. Nevertheless, we have the numbers of ingoing and outgoing power so we can calculate the efficiency of the device. So 4.76 watts came from the solar panel and 4.15 watts went into the battery. So if we calculate the output divided by the input, we get the efficiency, which is in this case 82.1%. This isn't so exciting because we, there is a loss, or it seems there seems to be a loss of 0.61 watts. But that's not the entire truth to the story because 
In this experiment, I was running the access point and the station interface of the ESP32. In access point mode, the ESP doesn't put the Wi-Fi radio to sleep, so it's always on. It's sending beacons and the Wi-Fi receiver is never turned off in order to save power, which is a feature of the Wi-Fi station mode because transmitting Wi-Fi is expensive with regards to power consumption and Wi-Fi reception is also expensive with regards to power consumption. So the average power consumption of the Wi-Fi interface was 0.49 watts. And if we take into account that this power was consumed on the board in order to provide Wi-Fi, then the efficiency is 97.5%. That value is not 100% accurate because the clamp air per meter also has a measurement error. It's pretty accurate, but of course it could be a little bit off. Nevertheless, the board has been designed to operate at 100 watts solar input with an efficiency of 95%. And at only 5 watts input, the efficiency of the DC-DC step-down converter is excellent because the losses are very, very low. There is only the loss from the circuitry itself and that adds up to a loss of 0.12 watts. So efficiency is above 95%. So I've now connected it to a battery that is discharged because the other one was charged already. And at the moment I'm covering the solar panel and we see a discharge current of 50 to 60 milliamperes. That's because the Wi-Fi in the device is active. So now the MPP tracker is connected. You can see that uh, the charge current is now 1.56 amperes. And I'm now going to measure with the second instrument the voltage that goes to the battery. So the voltage going to the battery is 12.47 volts. So now let's compare again without the MPP tracker in place. 12.21. So 1.35 amperes. 12.21. Taking into account that 0.49 watts were consumed on the board for running a Wi-Fi hotspot, the energy output of the solar module was improved by 20.2%. I have to note that all measurements were made at about 600 watts per square meter of irradiation and about 35 degrees of solar module temperature. In October 2021 in Berlin, in very hot climate, the negative temperature coefficient reduces the amount of voltage of the maximum power point. Therefore, maximum power point tracking is not as efficient in hot climates as it is in cold climates. So what we didn't do today is to connect a consumer to the load output of the device. Uh, this setup with this small battery and a small solar panel, which can be half the size of this one, is sufficient to run the Wi-Fi, the device itself, uh, to run sensors like environmental sensors or other communication stuff. Um, so it's an autonomous network node yeah, or sensor node. As you see fit, it can be used for different applications. Well, thank you for watching.